Jesus said that his followers would have a love that makes them recognizable. Most Christians are known for being full of hate. I wonder if they've ever met Jesus. So Christians like to play up this idea that they have a distinct morality, that somehow they're better than other people, but statistics say otherwise. Christians are just as violent and arrogant and pig-headed as anyone else can be. We have a history of participating in genocide, shoot up Planned Parenthoods, bomb abortion clinics, and right now most evangelical Christians are cheering on a presidential candidate who glorifies violence as the answer. And all of these things, mind you, are defended by reference to the Bible because the Bible can be used to justify all kinds of abhorrent behavior. A lot of people like to pretend that the entire Bible has one vision of who God is, one sense of morality, one view of religious duty. But the whole Old Testament is a conversation amongst traditions who were all worshiping the same God, but disagreed on a lot of things. Priests were doing one thing, prophets were doing another. The wisdom tradition is off having its own conversation entirely. And in the New Testament, we see people rethinking all those old traditions in light of Jesus. Because Jesus is authoritative, not all those old traditions. Because Christians are named after Christ. They're the ones who follow Jesus as the fullest revelation of who God is, not the Bible as a whole. Some like to pretend that there isn't any conflict there between Jesus and the rest of the Bible. And they use words like mystery and paradox instead of contradiction so that they can dismiss the issue without explaining it. One thing that people will say is that God's love is just a different kind of love than ours. I used to say that, but it's ridiculous. It's confusing, and it's, it's just another way of saying that God isn't loving. If God's love has nothing to do with our love, then it isn't love. That kind of love has no power to drive out fear. But no, Jesus tells us to be like our Heavenly Father who is kind to the wicked and the ungrateful, and then we will be his true children. The reality is we see images of God that don't match up. A God of anger and vengeance, slaughtering his enemies and commanding us to do the same. And Jesus, saying that his Father is kind to the wicked and the ungrateful, who forgives his enemies and commands us to do the same. It's the inability to see any kind of progress or development in the Bible. Assuming that Abraham had the same full understanding of God that Paul had. Because the Bible covers thousands of years of different kinds of people in different situations trying to come to terms with a God who seems very different than us. Ever since the Bible was assembled, all those old pictures of God have been used to justify slavery and war and torture and revenge and capital punishment. The reality is that all those things can be found in the Bible and can be justified by it. And all of them are the opposite of Jesus. If we treat the whole Bible as if it's all fair game, then we're likely to find in it whatever kind of God we're looking for. If we want a God of peace, it's there. If we want a God of war, it's there. If we want a compassionate God or a vindictive God, it's there. If we want a God demanding blood sacrifice, it's there. And if we want a God who condemns and rejects blood sacrifice, it's there. Sometimes the Bible is like a Rorschach test. It says more about the person reading it than who God really is. By doing this, even without realizing it, we're able to create a God exactly in our own image by just relying on the image that suits our need at the moment. And then we say it's biblical. Saying something is biblical is easy. You can have a solid biblical defense for slavery, genocide, war. But when we hold these things accountable to the image of God we see revealed in Jesus, they all fall short. See, the Bible isn't one book that presents a unified image of who God is. It's a library of books written by hundreds of people over thousands of years. It's an ongoing conversation about something that's deep and mysterious. It's the recorded history of a progressive and evolving understanding of the divine. Later wisdom writings critique the earlier wisdom writings. Later prophets critique and correct the earlier prophets. Jesus makes reference to them all and critiques them just as much as he relies on them. The story of the Bible is the story of God slowly and painstakingly leading us out of the delusion that God is like us and leading us into the challenge presented to us in Jesus. If we want to do violence to our enemies, 
All we need to do is appeal to those old pictures of a God of retributive justice in the Old Testament and, you know, minimize or set aside the images of enemy love and forgiveness and self-sacrifice that we find in Jesus. A lot of conservative Christians get upset about picking and choosing in the Bible. But here's the thing, we're all picking and choosing. And I think they're the worst because they don't see it. And actually, I don't think it's such a bad thing to pick and choose. I just think we need to look really closely and be honest about why we choose one thing and not another. What I'm calling us back to is an emphasis on Jesus as the revelation of who God is, and not allowing ourselves to get distracted by everything else, as if those old pictures of God are just as valid as Jesus is. Now, that doesn't mean I'm advocating throwing out the Old Testament or the Bible. All of that stuff is important. It plays an important role in our study and in our worship and in our contemplation of who God is. What I am saying is if we come across something in the Bible that's a contradiction with Jesus, then we remain faithful to Jesus. The Old Testament writers didn't have access to Jesus, but we do, which means we're held to a higher standard of morality, which is nothing less than perfect love. As Christians, we're the ones who pattern ourselves off Jesus, not the Bible. So if there ever seems to be a conflict between the two, go with Jesus. In some circles, this is a highly controversial subject. So I really want to know your thoughts, but also be kind to each other. Be compassionate, even in disagreement. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for liking, sharing, and subscribing.